If we are able to allow animated deforming meshes to participate inside physics simulation, we can produce simulations of some interesting objects like snakes or worms or anything else that can generate its own locomotion and drive the physics simulation. Let's see how we can do this using Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. To start, I'm just going to create my ground plane so I can drop something onto it and I'm going to try and simulate a little snake that will be able to crawl along this ground plane. I'm going to make this sufficient big and I'm going to use the static collision preset on this so that we are able to simulate this as a ground plane. Next I'm going to add a cylinder and this cylinder is going to be my snake object. I'm going to make it sufficiently long and then I will add enough segments along its length so we are able to create a wave along its body length. This many segments will do. And next thing I'm going to do is apply a wave modifier on top of it. So from the modifiers list, I'm going to select wave and I'll set the amplitude one and two to be the same values so that we can get an even wave. Initially, the wave is not created in the right direction. So I need to go into my sub object and move and rotate the wave control gizmo manually. So I'm just going to approximate it by using the rotate operator inside 3ds Max and it looks sort of right. So we have this nice little wave going along the mesh and maybe we can make it a little bit smaller like this. So the next thing I want to do is animate the phase of this wave as we go from frame 0 to 100. So we get the snake to crawl along the surface. I'm going to go and set the phase of the object to be a bigger value at frame 100 and if I scroll back, you can see that my object is now wiggling back and forth. And maybe this is a bit too much actually, so I'll just change the face to a smaller value. Just like this, if I play back, you can see that our object is now crawling inside the scene. So now I'm going to go into the Lucid presets again, and I'm going to add the rubber preset, just so this object is added as a soft body simulation object. And at this point, if I show us particles, I can see that my object is added, but the particles are a bit too big. So I will go into the flex settings object, which is already pre-created inside the scene, and I will set the particle radius to be manually assigned. I will set this to a value of 1. So we get nicely sized particles along the length of our mesh. The problem now is that if I scrub my timeline, the object does not inherit the underlying deformations which we have applied to this mesh. And what I need to do to enable this is go back to my Lucid modifier, scroll down a bit and find the Adapt Mesh Animation checkbox. Once I click this checkbox and I re-simulate, we can see that now we get the simulation that we have applied to our object inside the scene. Just like this, you can see that the object is now undergoing locomotion because it is waving and this wave is causing it to move forward just like a real snake would. Now we can play with different parameters and actually the simulation is really quick so I can just hit play and see what kind of parameters I can apply on top of this. For example, I can select my flex settings object just need to jump out of the playback mode. And in here, I can set different parameters. For example, I can increase the dynamic friction and make the object grip on the surface a little bit more, or I can change the static friction or actually add some adhesion to the object so that it will be sort of glued a little bit to the plane and it is gonna have to struggle to move forward. And if we just allow the object to move under its own strength, you can see that it will soon move forward and fall off the plane. I have actually went ahead and created created a little demonstration scene where on top of the snake I also added some ridges to my terrain and this way we get a little bit more interesting simulation results. So once I hit play you can see that the snake is not only moving but it is also having to fight some obstacles and perform some other interesting actions. I saved the scene as a sample so you can download this from our website and give this a play yourself. So with this setup you can use any mesh that has an existing deformation and animation through out its timeline to participate in the physics simulation and be able to change things around it and be able to produce some interesting results. Let's just create a few more of these guys and send them all in their different directions just to see how this all works in real time and you can play with the parameters right inside the viewport as you are simulating them. So I hope you can find this type of workflow useful for your own simulations and you can find some interesting uses for this. Thank you very much for watching.